Todd Ehrlich with uh, Digital Enamel. We're at the Texas Dental Association meeting, and I'm here with Richard McComas. <laughs> Richard McComas. I just met him. I was walking. I was walking the booths, and I don't normally like go talk to printer guys because that's August's job. So I'm kind of taking his job right now. But I couldn't help resist looking at your printer, and you've sure. got a entirely different technology or we platform. Do. That tell me all about that. So 3D printing in dentistry is all about what's called vat photopolymerization, which okay. is the idea that you take a liquid resin in a vat and then expose it to light. Right. The the early implementation used a laser light to write the, the prints. Right. The second generation implementation used a DLP light to write the prints. And the third generation uses an LCD screen that's blocking an LED mask. I see. And it basically looks like this. So you build a dispersed LED light array. So these are all LED lights that's that right. are coming through that have a certain region. They're, that... they're four or five nanometer lights. Okay. We put them through varying parabolic reflectors so that we can get a really, really even collimated light source right at here. Okay, so my, li I mean, I'm amateur when it comes no, to no printing. I've done just a little bit. What I understand is on other light sources, you get distortion or inaccuracy the farther away you're from the, the so, middle of the build plate. Right. Right? So if you're, if you're doing a, a laser-based print, what you'll end up with is really good accuracy right in the middle. Uh -huh. But the further out you go to the outside, you're going to get an oval shape. Because it has to reach laser. over there, right? It has to reach. It okay. travels further, it gets more diffuse, and when it hits your resin, it shoots off in a bad angle. At an angle, right. Yeah. So they're accurate in the middle of the build plate, but wildly inaccurate on the outside. I see. It's limited of the tech. Right. With a DLP light source, you have a bright spot in the middle and then uh -huh. dimming on the outside. Accurate within about an arch, but inaccurate for two arches or across a larger build so plate. So they, are they limited on the size of their build plate? They are. The right. DLP systems usually run about this big. This is your standard 47 micron DLP system. I see. Okay. And by taking the light source and making it diffuse, we can scale that up. Scale so, that up dramatically. So this is good for like the footprint of a dental office because we need right. small, small, small. Right. But big enough to do, to a do as much as you want to. Right, right, right. So here's our build plate. Okay. Um, compared to the standard dental size build plate. And it and it won't matter where the models go on there. The surgical. The light that's really cool. is even, and uh, we can fit as many arches as you can fit on, and they'll all be just as even. That's awesome. So, that is so cool. Yeah. So. Um, what, Again, I'm an amateur. Sure. August is the expert at all this. So tell me about the accuracy, because we get a lot of confusion in the on the doctor side of things, uh, how things are like the X, Y, Z values, yep. everything. And you guys fight about all that. So tell me about that. So the bit. first thing I'd say is ignore Z values. Z values Z, the, are, the height. yeah, that's how people cheat on their accuracy numbers. I see. Okay. It basically comes down to your stepper motor. If you have a stepper motor that okay. can drive a Z value so that this moves up at a sure, very Show me where level. that is in your printer sure. so I know where that is. So basically a printer is only two components. There's an optical engine. Okay. In our case, we have a distributed LED light array. That's in the box. That's in the box. This is inside here. Right. An LCD screen. And then a Z axis that moves up and down. So that's the thing that goes and up and down. And that's the yeah. thing that goes up and down. Okay. We have a very, very well engineered Z axis. Well, when, I, when you showed it to me earlier, <laughs> I was like blown away because I was holding this thing. I mean, this thing's heavy. I it's mean, this is solid metal. And it's then you showed me the other one. This is the standard one that you get in a lot of, con, kind of consumer printers, including yeah. all the ones you'll see here today. Yeah. We, but, we went a different direction with it. Yeah, no, I, I mean, Solid metal like that, you, you can't beat on that because it's just it feels kills a me. Like we're a 3D printing company, but there's nothing in our printer that was 3D printed. We ended up <laughs> <laughs> having to do CNC milled aluminum for everything because well, it just gave us the features we needed. I know you're getting ready to launch this. Tell we me are. what the calendar is for so you. So our this. official launch, we're going to be at AAO uh, uh -huh. later this week, and our official launch is at CDA in California, May 17th. That's when you'll be able to find more info online. So you can think of this as a big preview for yeah. the folks down at Digital Enamel. Oh, well, man, I'm <laughs> glad I ran into you. Yeah, I me just too. A, really, I hope the meeting went well for you. And uh, right, it was really good seeing Great you. Seeing you. And uh, I'm just fascinated by your printer. LEDs. That's excuse, right. Excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am. We're... <laughs> thank you. So we're using a distributed LED matrix. No, we like spontaneous. That was really good. She was really interested in the LED. She was the LED matrix. She was like, "I'm over there, buddy." Okay, go ahead. Keep going. I'm sorry. So these are all UV LEDs. They're four or five nanometer. Okay. And